Welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. My name is Jackson Mummy, and each week we'll be bringing you updated information about the bar exam and what you need to do in order to make the next bar exam your last bar exam. Ready to get started? Let's jump to it. Hi, everybody. Welcome. It is Wednesday, February 8th. We are two weeks until the bar exam, and I have got our all-star panel with us today. We're glad to have all of you here as you're coming online. We've got lots of questions about what to do with two weeks to go until the exam. Two weeks until the test. Whew. Amanda, what's that feel like? Now is time that we are getting the countdown really going. I think some people got their whiteboards out and are crossing down the days. I think, though, even though there's a lot of nerves flying around and people need a lot of support during this time, it's also a really exciting time. So we had, I want to jump back and revisit something we talked about when I think Brianna and I first got on that sometimes nervousness and anxiety is like a little tricky devil. It's actually excitement. So check yourself because you've been gearing up all this like momentum and adrenaline you have going on. So I think there could be some excitement there if you really question, like, what are these emotions I'm feeling in my body? It's not all nerves because you've done the work. Yeah. And we've got Judge Dawson here. And Tracy, you're going to talk later about a great attorney, Leonard Chesler. To piggyback on what Amanda said, nerves and excitement goes with the practice of law, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Every time you gear up for a trial or a big hearing, you do all the prep work. You get yourself a good rest and a good meal, and you get yourself squared away, and then you come in and you show what you are capable of. You show what you've been working on, and it's a wonderful opportunity to take what happens in your own little office out into the public and into the world. And it's the same thing, I think, with the bar exam. But I hope you're excited to come in and show everything that you've learned and everything you can do. And you're excited to write those essays and do the MBE and, and your PTs and all that. That's where I hope you are. So yeah. I agree with Amanda. A little bit of nervousness is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And we've got a lot of questions today that sort of revolve around that eagerness and anxiousness and what should I be doing? We're going to address that. We're going to talk pretty specifically about what these next couple of weeks should look like in terms of your study. And June, I know that you've been doing the mindset coaching, and this is the time when mindset really becomes important, doesn't it? It's not just what you know substantively, it's the way you approach this. It is. A mindset is a huge part of being successful on the exam. And again, I we've been talking about this for three weeks on my call about being excited and being joyful for this. This is what you've worked for. This is like the Olympics for you. This is what you've trained for. It's time to show up. It's time to show up, do it, and get going, and go on down the road to your next journey. We love you guys here, but if we don't see you again, we're thrilled, because this means you're moving on to do what you're here to do, and that's super exciting. But yeah, get excited because why not? This is what you want. You've worked so hard for it. You take it in. Yes. Goes, yeah, I'm ready. I'm going to do this. And everything will change in your body during the exam. The students who do this the best, actually right before the exam, I hear them tell me, I'm at peace. I feel really good. And it's scary. They're scared because they're calm. That place to be. If you have some nervousness, again, like you just said, it's it's totally big. Anytime I try something new, I get the butterflies and I'm like, Rrr. but it's really because I'm excited for what I'm about to do. Not that I'm scared to, to do it. Yeah. And if you are scared, you do it anyway. Yeah. I think that's going to be our theme today. Let's talk about boot camp. If you are taking the exam in July of 2023 or later. We've got a live boot camp coming up here in Denver in May, May 19th and 20th. You can get the link on the website. You can reserve your seat for $250 and it's a refundable deposit. And this will be a two-day live event. June will be here. Judge Dawson will be here. I will be here. We may have some guests as well. And uh, we will be teaching you photo reading. We'll be teaching you mind mapping. We'll be teaching you how to write, and we'll be working with you on mindset. And it's a great experience. People that have been through the boot camp really have loved it. 
We encourage you to check it out and to join us. We're limiting the boot camp to 15 students, which is a very small group. So make sure you don't get closed out and eliminated from that. Reserve your seat today. So with that, I think I'm going to turn with Amanda and Tracy to our questions that we've gotten today. Let's uh, jump right in. First question was actually a fairly technical question. A student asked, how many times can you postpone the UBE in New York? If you cross a limit, can you, are you prohibited from taking the bar exam again? I didn't actually know the answer to this. <clears throat> so I went and did some research. And of course, it's always good to actually look at the bar examiner's website. Amanda's laughing. It's, yeah, probably uh, we should look it up. Now would be a good time to check the bar, double check your bar examiner's website in general. Check Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Ab so it's a good reminder for us all, right? Yeah. There's two things you should be doing right now. One is you should be watching your email for emails from us and from ExamSoft or whatever name they're going by this year for the software and from the bar examiners, because this is when they cap it. I'll just remind people, I'm going to get to the answer to this question in a minute. But I'll remind people that last July, it was a week before the bar exam when Florida bar examiners sent out an email saying, here's what's testable, which was not something that most people were looking for. So you really want to be diligent about this. I find that bar takers tend to skip their emails. They don't look at them. They're not as careful as they should be. And boy, this is what it can bite you. So be careful about that. Amanda's exactly right. And you should get on the website and just look at the rules anywhere. So anyway. When we went to the New York Bar Examiner's website, here's what we found. If an applicant repeatedly withdraws or fails to appear, the board may, in its discretion, require the ap applicant to petition the board before applying for a subsequent exam. So there's no hard and fast rule that says if you postpone X number of times, you're forbidden from taking the exam. But if you're a chronic postponer, then you could get into to trouble. So just be careful about that. New York has been particularly weird. And Amanda, you're a member of the New York Bar, aren't you? I am, yeah. Yeah. Throw New York under the bus, yeah. Yeah, there but, you go. But, weird about York, everything, though. New York yeah, has, are. it's slow to change for a lot of things. And we could go on about this. They have some weird laws. So if you're New York U UBE, we feel you. Yeah, exactly. And New York, remember, a year ago, wasn't letting repeat bar takers take the exam for a while. So it's been on and off with them. They've got a love-hate relationship, I think, around this particular issue. But in general... You're okay to postpone. It's certainly not a problem for us. We have no limit at all. But I think that you just want to be careful. And as Amanda said, you want to be checking the website and seeing what the rules are. So that was an easy one. The other thing I want to just say about the online test program, there are changes to questions. When we see an editorial problem, we're going to change it online on that program long before you'll see it in a book or a digital book or a print book. So Generally speaking, and there aren't many of those changes, but they tend to show up in the test mods versus somewhere else. The final thing that I would say to you is we did make revisions to remove questions uh, as required by our license with the NCBE. So the number of the numbering of questions in a print book right now does not match what's online simply because those print books probably predated our removal of the questions. It gets a little wonky. And sometimes people say, I need to, I've got a question about question 25, a civil procedure. And it may be different when we're looking at it. So just bear with us as we get through that. I tend to find in these last couple of weeks that those types of questions from students saying, I don't agree with this answer choice. Um, I appreciate that. They're helpful to us, but there is a point at which we just say, that's probably not the best use of time to go in and research that stuff. and it's okay and just keep moving. Do you agree, Amanda? You don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole in a specific question at this stage. Yeah, definitely. I think that there might be, sometimes you might want clarity and you could probably easily post in the group and get some yeah. clarity on it. But yeah. I wouldn't sit there like it, any of the ones that might have like a typo or a changed answer or something like that. It's probably going to be pretty obvious to you. You can post it, but I would post it and move on. Don't spend hours being like, oh, I'm going to look at the law and look up like the civil procedure law. Just if you yeah. want clarity on it because you want to know you under whether or not you actually understand it or not, I would post it because I did that a few times. I just posted it and then that was it. And just don't go back to your notes or anything like that for those things because it happens. Yeah. You know, I try at this stage to, to respond to those things when I can. It just takes a while. Today, as an example, I've got, I think, eight different coaching calls, individual coaching calls, plus this teaching session. 
So there's a limit to how quickly I can respond to those kinds of errors when I see them or questions. Uh, but I think we've been pretty good about catching up and staying with people. And I think the, gr the group is pretty helpful too. I want you to get like three, three people respond to be like, oh yeah, that looks like a typo. And then you can be pretty confident and wait for Jackson's response later on. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I do want to encourage people to use the community group for that purpose. It can be very, very helpful. And the group consensus around things can help. Sometimes the group goes off in weird ways. And then I have to say, no. Reel them back. Go, yeah, yeah. No, do not do that. But in general, I think we're okay. So there you go. All right. Next question we've got, a student said that they were having problems with character evidence for the, and they didn't, and I said, you mean your character and fitness check? And they said, no, character evidence as a topic in evidence. And uh, they wanted some detail. I'll just let you know that we did post some of that. I did a mind map and a brief summary, and I posted it in the community group. So if you're looking for character evidence update, that's where it is. You'll also see that if you had bar maps, that new mind map for character evidence is part of bar maps and it's already built in there. So whenever we add a mind map, we do it as part of bar maps. And I think this is a good time to talk about a couple of these tools. Last week, we talked about bar maps and nutshells. I think those are both really important tools to try and move you along. I had a comment from a student this week who said, your material is too voluminous. There's too much here for me. And this was somebody who had taken the bar successfully a couple of states. And I think they were just looking for some brush up stuff. <laughs> and I said, let's move you to bar maps and see how that works for you because it, it focused and moved them in a more detailed way. And, they, and that was helpful to them. In general, I think you should be trying to narrow your studies now these next couple of weeks. And so uh, bar maps will help you do that because it gives you the mind map and the video lecture with timestamps and the fast finish audio lecture. So those three tools built into bar maps are really valuable and I think can help you. You can buy bar maps for a specific subject. If you just want to buy one subject, I saw somebody bought just the property bar maps the other day, which is great, but you can buy the whole set, which includes your multi-state and state at a pretty reasonable price. The other tool is the multi-state video nutshells. <clears throat> this is a series of seven video recordings. They 25 minutes each in length. They summarize the entire MBE subject with the text of the nutshells on the screen. And then you're listening to the, the recitation of that. It's all done at high speed. So it's great for quick study and listening to at night. So I think those are a couple of the tools that, that I really like at this last stage. Amanda, am I missing anything there? Yeah, I think those are all all great. And then your own mind maps that, you know, you've been yeah. creating that to synthesize if you've been doing your own mind maps, the material, that's a point of doing them. And some students yeah. been asking me, what did you look at a few days before the bar? Yeah, I stopped looking at the long outlines or the lectures. I just used my mind maps that I had made and I made a decision of the smaller ones that I would go over. So yeah, yet less voluminous at this point. You're yeah, kind of, you know, okay. narrow it down, bring it down work in depth and don't work wide. I think that's our mantra here. Great. Yeah, Let's go ahead. Box, we have this question. Is the fast track in bar maps the same as the nutshells? No, the fast finish in, that's a great question. The fast finish in bar maps is the actual audio soundtrack to a full four hour lecture compressed down to under two hours. In the video nutshells, we've literally taken the nutshell, the written, book that you've got in your course or digital course. And we've turned that into a video. And we did that long before AI and chat GPT. And pretty, pretty proud of that, actually. It's a pretty great tool. So two different products, two different uh, resources that you use. Great. Thank you. I had a student that said, I met with Judge Dawson the other day, and she recommended that I start listening to the nutshells to sharpen my rule statements. Where can I find that? You can get that. There is a discounted rate. For our students, if you're not in our course and you're listening to this as a podcast, you can still purchase that product. You have to pay a little bit more, but it goes into your permanent library. I think the nutshells are really helpful. Tracy, let me just ask, what was your thinking about why you wanted to recommend the nutshells? I think it's a good tool now in the last couple of weeks, especially when you are doing something else like driving, getting dressed, going to sleep. It just is a loop that goes around in your head. I think for some of the students still trying to write essays, it clarifies some things that they're going to see in the essays. 
so that they can pinpoint what the law is. And I also understand that the nutshells really are a good nuancing of how you're going to apply what you're seeing. So I think it's just a really good tool now with a couple of weeks to go to just get things in your head. Yeah, then that's the design of it. And that's why we want to do it. Encourage you all to check that out. It's a useful tool. A student said, thanks for the exam preview video. I found it informative and insightful. And during the video, Jackson refers to a handout that was developed specific to the, the July 2022 administration. What they're talking about is that prior to the July exam, we had to talk about what was going to happen with the 2022 Supreme Court decisions. Now, I need to clarify what's going on here nationally because it gets confusing. Okay. If you're taking the UBE, you don't have to worry. The 2022 Supreme Court decisions are not on the table. The bar examiners have told me that directly, and I'm going to take them at their word. You're not going to get an abortion question. You're not going to get a establishment clause question where you got to apply lemon or X lemon. I don't know. What do we call it? Old lemons? Bad lemons? Sorry. Just... It, it, you don't have to worry about it if you're in the UBE. So that part is good. But if you're in Florida, the Florida examiner said explicitly before the July exam, that's all testable to us. The 2022 decisions are testable. So I did a video last July in which we went through the Supreme Court term and we talked about it and we did a handout. If you are in California or Georgia, we don't have guidance from the examiners. We don't know what they're going to do. In other words, they could test the 2022 decisions in their essays, possible, but they haven't said they will or they won't. So you'll find that material again in the constitutional law section of your online courses. This creates a real dilemma. If you're in Florida, you absolutely are going to have to operate in two different worlds. On Tuesday, 2022 happened. On Wednesday, it didn't happen. If you're in California or Georgia, Maybe you got to do what they do in Florida. Maybe you don't. We just have no way of knowing. I think if you get an essay in California or Georgia that implicates the 2022 decisions, you better write about it that way. So I want you to be prepared for that. If you're in the UBE, you could sleep well at night. We don't think this is an issue for you. So did I, Amanda, did I get that right? Did I set that up properly? Yep. I think that makes a ton of sense. And uh, yeah, and what, best of luck to the people in Florida <laughs> operating in two different times, past and present. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's just crazy. But by the way, Florida has also announced that they will test the rules that came into effect in Florida in July of 2022, state law. They announced all this before the July exam, then they didn't test any of it. I think that's a shot across the bow telling you it's coming in this exam. That's my mm -hmm. sense. But we'll see. California, I don't know what they're going to do. Georgia, I don't know what they're going to do. The world has gone crazy. So there you go. <laughs> we got a few questions that, that came up, basically all wrapped around the same theme. Someone told me their score on an OPE or on a practice test. And the scores, one student said, I got 63 out of 100. Somebody said, I got 90 out of 100. Somebody said I got 81 out of 100. These are great scores. And then the agenda asked, is the score good? Yeah. Yes, they are. The, the way that she, I'm laughing because it's like, what do you want me to say? I've given you the baselines. I've given you the benchmarks. Of course they're good. But in general, what you're aiming for is you want to be at about 130 raw questions correct out of 200. If you're at that number in every jurisdiction, you're going to be fine. Now, some jurisdictions you can get away with a little bit less, some you need a little bit more, but that's a, a rough average that we're looking at. So when somebody says to me, any number that comes to 130, 65 times two, 130, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, then I tend to get this part of the question. How do I improve my score two weeks before the exam? All right, let me throw it over to you, Amanda, because you've got one of the highest MBE scores I've seen in a long time. How did you improve your score if you're already at 130 raw, correct, with two weeks to go? Yeah, so I do think there is like a lot of room for improvement, except for the person who's maybe at 90 or 80. Yeah, Sorry, right. just not going to get to 100 out of 100. Not gonna happen, go right? for it. It's not going to happen. So you are where you are. You can just go to sleep and, and wake up yeah. before the exam. But I think that doing the answers, that reviewing mm -hmm. the answers. So 
the mm. questions that you got wrong, thoughtfully going back, reviewing them, look at the answer explanations. If you understand it, great. Don't dwell on it. You know why you got it wrong. If you don't understand or you're still working with it, go to your mind map, add to your mind map, or use the control find feature in the outlines, but don't take the deep dive. Don't go down any rabbit holes. Just use your, use the ones you got wrong. Think about the ones you got wrong, not as the ones you got wrong, but as all the opportunity to learn right? That's your learning opportunity right there. So if you got 63 out of 100, what is that? 37. You have 37 questions for learning opportunity. And that's a lot. Even if you just get five more out of them. And the great thing about the bar exam, which there aren't that many great things, but we can say one great <laughs> thing is they test the same things over and over again. So if you review those 37, there's got to be one or two of those are going to pop up on the exam and bam, now you're at 65. So they literally just test the same concepts over and over again. So doing that, I think is a really great way to improve your score. And for the people who are at those like higher numbers, and then some people might be feeling bad, I'm not there yet. I wasn't at the higher numbers when I was, when I took my first practice test. So don't worry about it. If you're there, good for you. Maintain, get good sleep. Don't get sick. Don't speed in the car, be safe. And for the people who still need to get there, don't worry, there's still time to get there. Yeah, two weeks is plenty of time. And I say to students, I've been saying it today, look back two weeks and see how much improvement you've made in this period of time. You've got plenty of time to improve. One student who got good scores said, I don't know if it's because I've memorized the questions. Look, if you memorize the questions, good for you. As Amanda said, those same topics are gonna to come up on the exam. So I'm happy with that. These exams are pretty predictive. Uh, these full length tests. So that's why we like them. That's why we use them. And uh, our experience over literally decades now with some of these tests has been that you're going to come pretty close to what you did on these practice tests. So this is the time when they become productive. If you're just doing the 25 questions per subject in each MBE topic, those are not predictive at all. They're designed to help you learn the law. So don't get too concerned about what that looks like. I was going to say one other thing. The student who got the higher score is saying, I still feel like I don't know it. This, I think this bears repeating. I don't know if you're ever going to feel like you know it because you're never going to know it all. People ask me that. When did you know that you were going to pass? And truly, I don't think that I'm a incredibly like modest or humble person. I'm good at what I'm good at. And I think I can own my strengths. I really don't know if I ever knew I was going to pass. Mm -hmm. And when I sat down and wrote my reflection the day after exam, people were like, you had to have known. You got such a good score. You had to have known. It, it's just not designed like that. The test is not yeah. designed like that you will yeah. know that I got enough because it's just so much. It's just yeah. so much. So you might never get that feeling, but you have to believe. You yeah. might never get it, but you really, you have to believe that you did the work. And if you did the work, you're going to come out successful on the other end. But that, I get what that student is saying and I validate yeah. that. So you yeah. don't have to go searching for that. Just leave it. Yeah. yeah. Be a boss. Let's go ahead. Be a boss. <laughs> oh, sorry. A couple of interesting, just we're still in the end world. Another student said, I just finished up my last MBE subject. <laughs> Should I go straight to the OPE test? Yes. Based on where we are today, on February 8th, you should not be doing the second set of MBE questions. You should be in the OPEs, and then you should be looking at the February 91 MBE 1 and the 2021 MBE, which is the latest exam that's been released. And that's the only one, that 2021 test, that includes federal civil procedure. So that is a mandatory test. You've got to do that one. And then we'd like you to tell us your score, although we can see it if you did it online, but we would like you to tell us your score so that we can offer some advice about balance. How much do you do essays now? How much do you do MBE? Sometimes along with this, people ask this question, should I be doing a hundred MBEs per night? How many essays per day? Go ahead, Amanda. Why don't you take this one? I don't even know what to say. No, definitely do not do 100 MVEs per night. I don't think that it's very unsatisfactory that there is no magic number. And right now, like people are looking for shortcuts like, oh, yeah, if I just do 100 a night or I just do 15, then that means I'll pass. No, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that anyone is going to pass. And there's no way for us to lock that in. But you if you're working steadily and consistently following the course, you'll be good. But that's just too many. You're going to burn yourself out. The same thing with how many essays per day. If you're done with the course, maybe you can do 20 questions, 15, 10, whatever you feel. There's no number that Jackson or I or Tracy or June or anyone can tell you that saying, if you do this many or this is how many you should be doing. And in fact, I do think 
it bears repeating again that I find the people who do more questions and don't actually take the time to figure out why they got the questions wrong. They're not using the questions as learning. They're just doing more and more actually end up falling for the traps on the ME when they start to answer. I'm like, why did you pick that answer? And there was, and because it's actually an answer that is a misstatement of the law. And I think there's, I don't, I have no proof on this. I think it's, you just start, keep reading those misstatements and you're like, oh yeah, that sounds like the law. So really doing things more thoughtfully and having some sort of strategy around it is more important than how many you do. I really believe that because I think I start seeing the reverse happen, actually. Yeah, I agree. And having done this for over 30 years, I've developed what I think is pretty strong pedagogy here at the end for review. But you should follow that. That I, It's not random. I did make it up a long time ago. And then we tested it and refined it and changed it and refined it. And today, I think it's the right way to study. I think it's the most productive way. And when people start moving around and trying to figure out, as you say, Amanda, that magic bullet, that quick shortcut, they tend to get themselves in trouble. Not if they end up doing X number of questions a day. There is no magic number, as you say. And when it comes to essays, I think you can wear yourself out. I think you wear yourself out with writing too many performance tests. But you can certainly wear yourself out with too many full-length MEs. So I think it's important to keep a balance and keep following the study plan as you see it. So again, practice, but don't go crazy. The goal here is to come in smooth. It's not to come in hot, but you're not the Tom Cruise and Maverick. You're not trying to land the airplane hot on the deck. That's our thought process there. All right. Um, we got another question. Students said, what am I allowed to bring into the test room? The answer to this is it depends on the jurisdiction. In most jurisdictions, you can't bring anything in. In Florida, they at you down and, and check to make sure you're not bringing anything in. Most jurisdictions will not let you bring in food or gum or candy or anything that would be annoying. Some jurisdictions will let you bring a black pen, but they inspect it. Others will give you a writing utensil. The biggest thing, of course, is your laptop. You bring your laptop in, it gets checked. I want to remind you again, and Amanda, I think you were probably part of these exams, where ExamSoft imploded. <clears throat> there were all kinds of changes to the software. There were things, wasn't it a couple of years ago, and they put out a new version of ExamSoft and it didn't work on Mac products. It was crazy. Anyway, this is the time to watch for emails from them. And I hope I've got this right, that it's still ExamSoft. They keep changing their name, but I think that whatever, whatever the software company is that's doing the software for your laptop, make sure you're whitelisted for their email address and that you check every day because they have a bad history in this last two weeks of saying, oh, we just realized this doesn't work with the new iOS or whatever it might be. I'm not saying that's the case this time, but am I remembering that right, Amanda, that, that they made life a little crazy? Yeah, I think this pops up even if it's not a mm. widespread issue, yeah. but there has been widespread issue. I think if you go back and listen to other episodes, you and Megan talked about it. Again, technology mm. is infallible. Like anything right. can happen on the day of the exam. I would say that also this is why the mindset's so important because you can do everything. One of my, my favorite quotes about running is it's for those who value delayed gratification and hard earned success. And one of the hardest things about running is similar to the bar exam. You can do everything right. And there will still be things out of your control, right? So we can test the exams off. All these things are great. Make sure that you're on the list. Make sure you're getting those emails. Mm -hmm. Search your email every once in a while for whatever email they have to make sure you didn't miss anything. Check with your peers. Check on our group. If you say anything, anyone see anything come up, there are people in your jurisdiction. Use those resources. By the end of the day, if you have a problem with your computer, you just have to raise your hand for a book and keep going. Like yeah. it's happened to other people before and they've passed the test. So I'd also say that now. <laughs> and one of the tricks we sometimes have with running, which such a man bring it up because it's so mental is envision the race, envision the exam going every which way. Envision it. I having no problems with my computer. Envision it having a lot of problems with your computer. But then you're having some problems with your computer. And at the end, you still get the same result. You, so run yourself through it a few times. Don't let it get anxious about it because if something happens that you cannot control, you just have to, you have to keep moving on. So I think now is a good time to also bring that up. Prepare. And then if you do all your preparing and everything happens, you got to just keep it moving. Yeah. Hopefully that's, that's helpful. Advice. Yeah, that's great advice. I think that's a terrific way to think about it. 
you have a question in the chat. For a lot of, in Florida, all these new laws, since there are no cases yet, what would we be asked if the laws are constitutional? If the laws no, are that's, constitutional? No, that's not what they'll ask, because they're going to assume they are. The way you're going to see it in Florida is in the Florida multiple choice. And you'll see a question that would just simply implicate, for example, there's, there's the rules, the laws in Florida about you can't teach certain subjects now, CRT. There's the WOKE Act. There's all the stuff that Governor DeSantis has done. And they're simply going to ask you questions that would indicate an awareness or knowledge of those particular rules. Again, there's a handout. You ought to look at it, be aware of it. We don't really know specifically how they test it. Could come up on an essay. But again, I would encourage anybody in Florida to watch my preview video. I, I go into some depth about that. Yeah, good question. All right. So, Tracy, we got you here. You said you wanted to talk about the greatest attorney ever. I thought you were going to talk about me, but apparently not. I've been a attorney. So what is it you want to talk about? Who is this Leonard Chesler guy? Tell us about well, this. Well, you should all know this morning that I've been subjected to some verbal abuse at the yeah. mouth of my brother who, who has called me a dinosaur. And I am a dinosaur in some ways, and I'm proud to be a dinosaur because the greatest trial attorney I ever saw and ever had the pleasure of practicing alongside and also from the bench, him perform his magic, was also a dinosaur. And his name is Leonard Chesler. What made Leonard Chesler so? He did have a fine legal mind. He did have a good, a good aura about him when he came into the courtroom. But this is what he did. The prosecutors would come in with their books and their briefcases full of police reports and evidence and all the things that they want to do in their little charts and things like that. We did charts back then with, with Sharpies and whiteboard. But they'd all come with all these accoutrements. And they'd have it all and they'd bring them in and they'd have their new suits. And Leonard would come in respectfully about 10 minutes before. And he had two pens and a small big old pad for a murder case. That's all he would bring in. Two pens and a legal pen. And everyone just assumed he wasn't prepared. Everyone just assumed that he had just picked up the case at the last minute and didn't know what he was doing. They were wrong. In Leonard's office, he had prepared everything. You talk about voluminous films that Jackson and Celebration Bar Review have prepared for you. That was what his war ring looked like. It was all of these materials and it was organized and he had gone through everything that he was supposed to go through. He had read all the emails. Wait, we didn't have emails back. <laughs> but he would go through everything he had and he would, he would sift it down into what were the essentials. And he knew the essentials. He knew the essential facts. He knew the essential law. He knew how to apply it. And he'd come into court and the prosecutor would start and bring up all the charts and bring all these exhibits and be showing things to the jury and talking so fast and going through all this stuff. And Leonard would just sit there. And then when it was Leonard's turn, he got up without his pins, without his legal pads, and every eye of every juror was on this man. And he had the ability to carry the day because he came in prepared. He didn't need a whole bunch of things with him. He came in prepared. He came in confident. And that's why I wanted to bring this to you today, because when you go into the bar exam, you can take your laptop, but you can't have anything on it that can be a you can't have anything in your pockets. You can't have any food or drink. You can't have all kinds of nutshells. You can't have any of your outlines. It's just you and what you have internalized and what you have sifted and what you want, what you know. It's just you being prepared with the exam, which is your jury, and you showing them why they need to find in your favor, why they have no other option but to give you the verdict of passing. And that's what Leonard Chesler taught so many young attorneys. It's not about the show. 
It's not about how many outlines you have. It's not about how many maps you have made. It's about you convincing this jury that they have to give you your verdict. Awesome. June, this sounds like it's right up your alley. I love that story, Tracy. That is awesome because we talk about this so much. Your mindset, 80% of passing is in your head. It is. You've done the work. You have the knowledge. How to pass. You, you want the quick tool tip? I'm going to give it to you. You want a person starting to believe in your ability. Your yep. ability. Now, that's hard. Because that means, true your warning, you have to trust person. 100%. Start today. Two weeks. I mean, to say, to believe. That's simple. What is a belief? A belief is something we're told or we hear or we learn and we know. That's what I believe in. That's what a belief is. So starting today, your job is to believe in you and your ability to be successful. And you will be. It really is that simple. And if you go, June, I don't believe, then start telling yourself today, you do. You do. I do believe. Write it on the stick. Say it every single morning. I believe in myself. I trust myself. I have the ability to do this. And then go do the thing. It is that so. Yeah. Amanda, I know that you have a Wait, great... if Jack, oh. I just want to say... Yeah. Are you the big brother? I am. <laughs> See, if he said you're a dinosaur, what does that make you? An older dinosaur. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, fine. You guys, Mike drop. not always. I just want to break up because we have fun. <laughs> we have fun with the bars. A family business, okay? Fine. We're good on that. You should be around the dinner table because there there are more members of our family with a legal background, so it gets a little hairy. Yeah. Anyway, Amanda, let me give you the last word here on on this idea of being prepared and not being overwhelmed right at the end with all of the stuff because I think that is a danger, right, to people. I think Tracy makes a really good point about coming and being prepared and not being just burdened down with too much. Yeah, I think that this idea of making yourself lighter is so useful because I think that's really what everyone is talking about. Like sometimes when we force and there's so much of that in our world, just do it, right? Get after it. Try. Like you try. Trying is to try to pass. To do that is it's very it's hard to try. There's some resistance and everyone's always thinking of the little engine that could and like chug a chug when you're weighed down by everything behind you. But this idea of these last two weeks, getting in this state of flow and stripping away all that doesn't matter so that you can come into this exam light so that whatever happens that day, whether there's noisy people by the bathroom, if you get a little cough or tickle in your throat, or you have a migraine or whatever happens that day, you are light and like you're in flow and you have only what you need to succeed. And that that's all you bring with you mentally, physically, and emotionally into that exam. And it'll take a little bit these next two weeks to to get there, but you'll get there. You'll get there if you believe and if you do that and if you focus on all those things. And I agree with Tracy and Jackson and June when they say, you can do this. And so much of it is mental. So much of the people who maybe fall short, a lot of it is mindset because not a lot of people out there are talking about that. Not a lot of people out there are talking about the barriers that real students are facing and how to get them into the mindset to pass this exam. Some of you may think it's all, it's a little woo woo. All you need to do is learn the law. But I think if all you needed to do is learn the law, pass race would be a lot higher you need to do this part too yeah so believe yeah this is an art form and you're learning an art form and as another dinosaur that i love said yogi berry 90 percent of this is half mental there you go 
<laughs> Great math. That's why we're all here, though, because we're not too good at math. That's why we're That's like, right. going. How many years have I been saying that, Jackson? <laughs> Tracy vacuuming. I know it's Rob I mean, you, Jen. I, June, very is the, June's <laughs> mindset is the glue that holds this all together. Really, it has been for yeah, years. It, it has really, been for years. I want to just touch. I know Amanda has last words. Go ahead, Jen. As Jackson Tracy said, something will go wrong. The morning of the exam could be during the exam. Could be at lunchtime. Just prepare and remind yourself you have a hundred percent survival rate. Yeah. And then it will. So June, Star. and I will say June, if it wasn't for you. So I, I had a hotel room the night before there was a screaming baby in the room next door to me the night before the bar exam. And this baby did not stop till three in the morning. I'm just, I'm telling you, and I cannot, I had earplugs. I had everything. And it's just, it, but honestly, I hardly ever think about it. I really, hard, I never bring that up here and talk about it because we, you all prepared me here for the thing that would go wrong. And I was like, this is my life. This is my life. Hey, hey. I so took I, always, I, I took the bar the, and I took the bar in the stockyards and I'm allergic to hay. No. We had Good a job. student last session who got food poisoning at the hotel. And because she had worked so hard on her mindset, was able to pull herself together, compartmentalize. This is a good compartmentalization. Do what she needed to do was successful got out of there went to the hotel and basically died for the but she did it she could have very easily said i'm too sick now if you are too sick please go see a doctor <laughs> but she felt i have to do this like her heart was guiding her on this and she was successful because she had worked on her mindset to pull into and ignore the rest and when this is over with, I can then handle that. And that's what I mean by compartmentalizing. It doesn't mean you shove it down and forget about it. It means you put it on pause for a moment. You do what you need to do. And then when you're done, you come back to it. Yeah, these are. You can do. Your mind is just stronger than you even realize. What you think you can't do, you can do if you want to. There you go. Next week, when we come back with a week to go, we are going to talk about those final preparations that you make. And they are, I'm just going to tell you, they're not learning more law. They are doing the things we've been talking about today. And I know there's plenty of stuff out there that tells you all the secrets for how to handle the rule against perpetuities. All that stuff's in our course too. It's there. But I really think the value is what we've been talking about the last 15 or 20 minutes today. And this is really what separates, I think, our approach from almost everybody else's in the industry. So I hope that this is helpful to you if you're listening to the podcast or you're this on replay. If you're here live with us today, we appreciate it. We're glad you're here. You can do great things in these next two weeks. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't be overwhelmed. Just keep working steadily. Follow the process. Follow the program. Don't make big changes. Just keep working step by step. I want to thank the panel as always, Judge Dawson, Amanda, June. Always glad to, to have all of you here. Glad to see all of you on the call today. And uh, we wish you all good studies. I know some of you will not be watching the Super Bowl this weekend. That's fine. Who cares? Those two teams. Eh. Football is dead to me. So in any event, but if you have been doing your studies and you need to take a couple hours to watch the football game, go watch it. And even if you don't like football, watch the commercials. So we will be back to you next Wednesday and uh, have a great week, everybody. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.